So, obviously a lot happened last night. And we're going to talk about it here because there's a lot and uh, as far as major scenes go. So anyways, what's going on everyone? This is Ninja Geek here and uh, we're bringing you another review episode. Going to be reviewing episode 3, thank you, that's the title. And uh, reviewing, meaning not summarizing, because they're completely different things. Going to be reviewing different aspects about it like I normally do anyways. So uh, let's get into the commentary here. We're going to start off with my noticing of the many bird's eye views that they're using now within the series. Because obviously we've seen bird's eye views in many of uh, the series before. We've seen them in season one. We've seen them in all the seasons, I think. Uh, most notably the beginning episode of season one where you see the tank like kind of zoom out. And all the uh, the walkers are around the tank because the horse just went down. Uh, they used bird's eye view before, but I've never seen it, at least to my recall, I've never seen it happen uh, more a lot of the time. And within season six, I see a lot of it. First of all, at the be- at the uh, end of season, or I mean, at the end of the episode one of season six, uh, we see the bird's eye view of the walkers walking towards Alexandria because of the horn, which we already found out what that was. So it zoomed out on that in the bird's eye view. In episode 2, we see a bird's eye view of Morgan walking away, sort of like towards the wall of Alexandria, walking away from Carol as Carol's coming towards Alexandria. He's walking away, bird's eye view again. And I see two noticeable bird's eye views in this episode titled Thank You, which is when Michonne and Glenn are leading the group into this town that they end up finding. This, not, not really a town, it's like a little, uh, yeah, I guess a little area for housing that once was there, little stores and stuff, and it zooms out to kind of show the whole town that's a little bird's eye view, and then at the end of the episode, they show a giant bird's eye view of the RV, so I'm wondering, why is there so many bird's eye views here? Am I just noticing them now, or has there always been bird's eye views, like a lot of them in the other episodes? Uh, I don't know, but I think it kind of means something, so I'm sticking with my gut on that, that the bird's eye views actually mean something, and because that's something that I actually picked up on during the, I mean, the first episode, yeah, we saw a bird's eye view, but actually during the second episode at the end where we see Morgan walking away, I was like, okay, there's something going on here with the bird's eye view thing, and then in this episode, we even get more of them, and it's just like, okay, I'm kind of putting the pieces together. We'll see what happens with that and see if I'm actually right uh, in the end. The next thing that I want to talk about, though, is the scene where we already saw from the preview how Rick is running uh, down the road. You know, he's trying to obviously get to the RV, and uh, he obviously, his knife breaks, he ends up pulling out his machete, he ends up cutting himself. And many people have speculated or whatever that they want to say. You know, obviously we know from season two that everyone's infected with the disease, we know many things by now. So, could something happen to Rick and his hand or his palm, or however you want to say it? Yes, uh, it's probably pretty viable that that could happen. But obviously, Rick isn't going to die. But obviously, uh, right now, at least from the looks of it, he's not going to die. I mean, Glenn will get into that. That's a different situation that we're going to get into mainly because that's what everyone probably wants to hear about me talk about Glenn. But you know, so. Rick ends up cutting himself. He doesn't really have anything to stop the bleeding. And he, you know, obviously he keeps on running. But the next thing that we see is kind of the battle between Michonne and Heath. Because obviously, like, Heath heard Rick talk to Michonne and Glenn before about how getting back to Alexandria, making sure that they get back before them because not everyone's going to survive. And Rick, I think Rick only meant that in the fact that everyone isn't going to survive, meaning that he doesn't, it's not like he doesn't want them to, it's just not going to happen because there's just too many and it may not end up happening, but if there is a chance that they can be saved, obviously Rick isn't going to be like, no, don't save them, you know, he's not like a, he's not like that kind of person, but, uh, you know, he, he realizes that this may not happen like that, so that's why he says it, and he picks up on this, and realize, and you know, thinks that he knows all, but then Michonne comes back uh, with the things that, uh, with the, uh, I call it the don't know speech, and I'm gonna try and play here for you now, if I can, so yeah, this speech uh, was pretty good anyways, and I, I liked how the, the uh, 
the sort of conflict between Heath and Michonne kind of built up in that one scene where Michonne kind of took leadership and uh, and even she wanted to get everyone back, obviously, uh, to Alexandria because, you know, it, it, it's only the right thing to do and you try and save everyone that you can. Obviously, she's not a killer or no one is really. Now, here's the part that you all probably wanted me to get to, which was... The POV shots, point of view shots, if you don't know, of Nicholas and the whole death scene between the, him, Glenn, and everything else that kind of was the shocker. It happened 45, 40, 45 minutes in, something like that, which completely just, it, it changed the way the episode was going because I honestly didn't think that that was going to happen. And, uh, and at first, when you look at that scene, that the fact, okay, Nick, which way are we going now? This way. Okay, so they go down there. They end up getting trapped anyways, of course. There's no way to get out. There's no way over the fence. They're on that side of the fence. They're on this side. They're blocked. They're on top of a dumpster. Or whatever. I think it was a dumpster that they climbed on top of. And there's nothing that they could do. I mean, there was literally, I mean, you know, they could have waited there. My guess would probably be better to wait there. I mean, I, I, something else could have happened in that time of them waiting there. But uh, Nicholas ends up taking his own life. And then here's where the controversial part comes in. He falls right on top of Glenn, which then falls into the crowd, the the thousands probably I mean obviously on screen they didn't have thousands but you know it obviously looks like a lot like hundreds I'll say of walkers that are there and obviously we see the scene you know obviously the way that it was shot though is really confusing to some people because at the at the way that it looked at first it looked like Glenn was just dead I mean it looked like he died and that was just it and it was really sad then you know, you take it back piece by piece out there. Okay, well, Nicholas fell on top of Glenn, which means that that can't be, you know, his, I'll say, intestines being ripped out. That cannot be him because Nicholas obviously fell on top of him. So that wasn't him. Glenn, I think, was was scared at the fact of the whole thing that went around him. and uh, But the way that they shot it, it looked like it. And I'll give the developers, or not the developers, I'm going to talk about the filmmakers and the writers props for actually filming it like that because it puts you in a suspense you know when you think of a character uh, going back to season four when you're thinking of like the governor for example and how he died yes you didn't see him on screen but you know that he died i mean there was a sense in season four in the mid-season i think it was the fact that okay you know michonne stabbed him right through the body and then I think it was Lily who just ended, you know, completely ended. But we don't see the governor on screen when he dies. We just see, you know, that he's struggling and then, boom, we assume that he's dead and he just is dead. Glenn is a different story here because he he didn't necessarily, quote, die. He just, he's just there. Now, my prediction is I personally think that he's going to die. But then you have all these foreshadowing events of things that happened before which I'd like to talk about the fact that before when Glenn actually if you remember before like I was saying how Rick cut his hand with the machete during that part Glenn is talking to him over the walkie talkie and the last thing that he says is actually the last you know like the three last words that he says is good luck dumbass which if you don't if you don't remember from season one uh Glenn calls Rick hey like hey the dumbass in the tank hey you dumbass and uh, I thought that, you know, after going back and saying, oh, okay, that's a, you know, it looks like a connection. It looks, it seems like in all ways that it's like foreshadowing of, you know, oh, that's like the last word that he says to Rick. And that was the first word that he says to Rick. And uh, it kind of looks, you know, it's like a foreshadowing event, which kind of leads me to believe how Glenn is going to die. Especially after also he pulled out the pocket watch for that uh, Herschel gave him that he still had and uh, other things that he had. Uh, in his bag kind of remembering and looking back on these things so I think that all of this is a foreshadowing event for how obviously Glenn died he didn't but like I said he didn't die and another thing to specify is that in the talking dead he was not in the memoriam which means that he didn't die he did not die but in my own opinion uh, I think that he died. So the question of the week, or he will die, I mean. So the question of this week for my episode is, do you think that Glenn will somehow make it? Because keep in note that Scott, the uh, producer, said that Glenn will appear 
in future episodes somehow. There will be some form of him, whether that be any means necessary, meaning Walker, meaning flashbacks, anything. Uh, We will see him sometime in any future episode, nothing else specified there. So we are going to be seeing Glenn again. And, uh, but my prediction is that I think that Glenn is dead. But you can let me know uh, what your thoughts are in the comments below. And uh, the last thing that we end up seeing from this episode that I want to talk about is the fact how Rick gets trapped in the RV. You know, the wolves that Morgan chose not to kill last episode came, attacked Rick, but Rick just annihilated all of them. Of course, in badass Rick style. And uh, the RV wouldn't start so we could get out of there and walkers are trapped and that's where we see the bird's eye view. Now, uh, Daryl obviously heads back to Sasha and Abraham so they're still leading the herd out where they were planning on going. But we end up seeing, you know, Rick trapped in this RV that obviously won't move. So that's where we end up leaving off. But obviously the big question for this week was about Glenn and, uh, you know, thoughts on that because he is a major character and it would be sad to see him go, but, you know, at the same time, like I said, I I honestly, highly 99%, ch- or 98% chance, I'll give a 2% chance that I'll make it, uh, because of the way that it is. I mean, yes, he's got protection from Nicholas's body that happened to be on top of him when he fell over, but, I mean, you know, this, while the zombies are stupid, they're not, you know, they sense food they could smell, And, uh, I don't know, maybe, I I honestly don't know, I mean, maybe, you know what could happen, I'm just thinking of this now, maybe, uh, Nick, from the guts that he spilled out, not to be gory or anything, but from the way that it happened, maybe they fell on top of Glenn, and Glenn just smells like one of them, so he gets up, he acts like a zombie, like he did in season one with Rick, and he pushes through, maybe that ends up happening, but I don't know, I still think that he's dead, if he comes back, I'll, it'll be a miracle, but that's the end of this episode, Leave a like if you did enjoy, and of course subscribe uh, for more content, including games and everything else coming with uh, Black Ops 3 and other stuff here on the channel, Star Wars Battlefront, all that stuff. And I will see you on whatever my next video happens to be. I'm Ninja Geek. I'm out. Peace.